Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank God for everything that he's doing and everything that he's about to do. Oh, we can't help but the praise. Because once we look back over our life and see how far God brought us, oh my God, I just got to give him a praise. I just got to give him a thank you. Because he didn't have to do it, but he did. That's the good part about it. Even though we was in our mess, God still blessed. Hallelujah. And I just give him the glory. And I give him the honor. And the woman of God has something that's all walk with me. And that was in my spirit, sitting up there. Because the more God walked with us, the more he is protecting us. The more he is guiding us. The more he is leading us. Ooh, because we can't do this thing by ourselves. Hallelujah. So come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Thank God. Because God is about to do something in this place on today. I don't know about you, but if you come to hear a word from on high, you need to shout. Woo, shout out to God. Let him know that you appreciate. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just appreciate who he is. Hallelujah. If you got your word, I'm just going to work with this one verse. Been fasting this week. God been talking to me. And I've been talking to him. Hallelujah. John, the third chapter, and the 30th verse. He must increase, but I must decrease. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers and doers of his most holy word. Father God, I thank you. I praise you. I give you the glory and I give you the honor. We just do your name. Now God, I can't do nothing without you, but with all things I can do with you. Father God, I ask that you will move by your spirit. Move by the anointing because your word declares that the anointing destroys every yoke. And Father God, I pray that you would give your people revelation and clarity and knowledge on this day. Somebody is seeking for a word. Somebody is seeking for a healing. But Lord, most of all, they need a breakthrough in their spirit. And they are trusting you. God, you even said we have not because we ask not. And God, we coming before you asking that you will move by your spirit, oh God. We yield ourselves as vessels unto you, God, knowing that you will do all things but fear. God, I pray for every bereaved family who had to lay their loved ones to rest on yesterday and even on this year. God, I ask that you will wipe every tear. Console every heart. Spirit of the living God. Let them know that you said you would never leave them motherless nor fatherless. That you is with them always. Even until the end. God, we just want to give you glory. We just want to give you honor because we love you. Uh, we love you with an everlasting love. That cannot be compared to me. And God, we thank you. And we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. And while I was fasting on this week, trying to get a message for God's people, the Lord just spoke to me. He said, there is too much flesh on display. He said, I want you to tell my people that they must decrease. So I may increase. Because there is too much flesh that is on display. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, he said, your flesh has overtaken your spirit man. To the point you are in a state of spiritual confusion. Come on, get somebody. He said, you are in the place to where you are calling things God that is not even God. That's how the enemy have you blinded. It has you settled in a 
plate of complacent. Knowing that if I do not have to pray, everything is still going to be all right. If God don't walk with me, everything is still going to be all right. But the Spirit of the Lord says, it's too much flesh. How you the bullshit that is on this plate. That you must decrease. That he has to increase. So as I was studying this verse, I came to realize that John the Baptist made the statement that he must increase. God must increase. So he may decrease. See, Jesus was on his way to John. Come on, it's somebody. And the disciples with John expressed their concern to him. Of the many people that was following Jesus. And being baptized by him. That's in John, the uh, third chapter and the 26th verse. They felt the uh, competitive spirit between John and between the master Jesus. But they was intimidated. Come on here somebody. By Jesus' ministry. You see, people go, we have some people like that today. Yes. <laughs> that is jealous, yes. intimidated of your ministry, of your walk with God, of how God has moved in your life, uh, how God has been right there beside you, how God has healed your body. You have people that are jealous of you, of your relationship with God. Yes. But people of God, they don't know what you've been through to get to the place you are at in God. They wasn't there when the others went out to eat, had fun, but then God commanded you to fast. And God commanded you to uh, read his word. They wasn't there when God told you to, uh, honey, shut down everything, to uh, turn over that plate, to uh, get before me. They wasn't there. When God had you up every night walking the floor and praying, rebuking death, rebuking demonic spirits, they wasn't there when God said, I called you out from among them. There is a price for the anointing. Come on here, somebody. The anointing does not come overnight. You have to be sold out for this. Hallelujah. John displayed a great work of humility. He knew the plan of God. In John the 30th, in John the third chapter and the 28th verse, he said, Ye selves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. You see, John told them, I have come to a place in my ministry that I must decrease so that the one that have come before me, he shall increase. Come on, you somebody. You do not put somebody else down because they have gone before you. Huh? Oh, my God. But if you will pray for them, come on here, somebody. Listen to the Holy Ghost well. You will go with them. Yes, Lord. Intimidation and jealousy will not be among your company. John reminded the disciples that he had never claimed to be the Christ, but that he was simply announcing the arrival of Jesus Christ. Who have you simply supported? Because of the kindness of your heart. Not for any bad motives. Not because you want what they have. That shows a great sense of humility. John was doing the work of God. But then God told him somebody greater is coming before you. And John said, I am here to announce Christ. Which is greater which I am not even worthy to even tie his shoelaces. Come on here, somebody. Who do we have that same humility today? So he went on to say in John the third chapter 
at the 29th verse, he said he went on to say that Christ gave him great joy. So he wasn't bothered in the least by the growth of the followers he had that was following him. It was orchestrated. Come on here, somebody. And John was rejoicing. You see, people of God, John was the forerunner to get the people to where they at. And, and then come behind him was Jesus Christ. Can you be a forerunner? Come on here. For somebody else without getting intimidated. Because the minute you get intimidated, your flesh has arose. See, that's what was happening with these men here. Yeah. They flesh had got in the way and they could not see the vision. They could not see the plan of God because they flesh had blinded them. Too much flesh on display. Oh my God. People of God, we have to get out of flesh. Yes. And we have to encourage and support each other. It don't matter how long you've been in ministry. It do not even matter how old you are. God looks at the heart. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God looks at your hunger and your thirst after him. Sometimes, people of God, listen to me well. You can be a stumbling block for someone else. Because of your lifestyle you are living. Because of the fact we just refuse to step back out of the limelight and to push someone else. But John helped his people that was walking with him to understand. Rejoice with those, with those who are rejoicing. Be happy that you got somebody coming before me that is greater that I am not even worthy to compare to. But I thank God we are under a new covenant because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of us. We can do greater works, but we can't do it in the flesh. Because the more we kill the flesh, the more the power of God will enter in us. And we can go out and spread the good news. Oh my God. But as long as you're in the flesh, the devil will keep you blinded. He will keep you right there where he wants you at. Oh my God, many of us want to hold positions and roles when God is trying to elevate us. But because we are comfortable where we at, the flesh overtakes the spirit. And we don't even realize that God is saying, I need you to come up. I need you to get out of this milk. I need you for to eat the meat that I'm trying to give you. I need you to come up to where I'm at. But but then we are so comfortable. We're so complacent. And oh my God, if my pastor like me here, I ain't moving. But instead of hearing the voice of God, we miss the move of God. People of God, if you really have a major encounter with God, I promise you won't do what you used to do. You won't even say the things you used to say. I'm talking about a real encounter with him. I ain't talking about one day you in and the next day you out. But if you have a major encounter with God, your whole life will change. Because let me tell you something. That flesh interferes with your relationship with God. That flesh interferes with your conversation with God. That flesh will not invite God into your presence. That flesh has to die. It has to die. And no, it's not hard. 
We make it hard. Come on here, somebody. But the word of God tells us it's not hard. We make it hard. Oh, my God. I must decrease. And he must increase. That means I must decrease. So I can exalt God. Yes. With a true worship. Uh-huh. That I can. Huh, you know, no chapter, exalt God. In the way I walk. Right. Exalt God. In the way I talk. Yes. Oh my God. People can look at me and say. Hey she is a woman of God. Without me even opening my mouth. Yo, yo, yo. I must decrease. So God can increase within me. So I can have. A, the move of God. In my life. Yes. Oh, people of God. That's one thing what the churches are lacking is the power and the movement of God. I want to see blind eyes open. I want to see the lame walking. I want to see deaf ears open. But the only way I can witness that, I got to decrease. Come on, you somebody. I'm not going to see that <laughs> in the flesh. I got to see it in the spirit. I got to allow God to work some things and let me help you out. Whew, the, most, uh, the flesh can be a pacifier. Yes. So what you mean, woman of God? It can hold you to a point to where you will say, ain't nobody going to hurt me no more. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. Because let me tell you something, the more you let that flesh die, God is going to tell you what to do. God is going to tell you where to go. God is going to tell you how to act. God is going to teach you how to love thy neighbor with an agape love and none of this fake love. God is going to teach you all things. But God said too much flesh is on display and he can't do anything while you are in the flesh. I know it's tight. But it's right. But the message comes to the messenger first. Hey, come on here, somebody. It comes to me first before I have to give it to his people. It's good to be corrected. That God does not allow you to die in your sins. Come on here, somebody. And that flesh is sinful. This is not the time. This is not the hour to play with God. You either in this thing or you out. You either going to say yes to his will or you're going to say no. You can't have it both ways. You can't have it both ways. And number two, it humbles ourselves before God. It shows great humility. I'm to the point now, I support anybody. I don't care whether or not you support me or not. I'm going to support you. Because I see what God sees in you. I hear some people say, well, they're not going to support me. I'm not going to support them. But what if God tells you to support them? Whether or not they supported you or not, what if God tells you to support them? See, that's what happens when you are in the flesh. You start talking things not of God. We are his ambassadors. We are his children. The flesh is an enemy to God. His son died on the cross so that we may be saved. We got to get out this flesh. The more I decrease, the more God is using me. And his glory shall be revealed in my life. I want to look at the book of Daniel. 11 chapter and the 32nd verse it said, And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. When the flesh dies, you know God. 
When the flesh dies, you are strong. You are strengthened. And you do great exploits. So whatever you do, it's going to show the love of God. Whatever you do, they're going to say, oh, God did that. God healed that person. God raised him up. God raised her up. God opened that door. Because when you are of the flesh, and the more you decrease and the more he increases in you, people of God, you have a covenant with him. And his word shall not return unto you more. It's not going to return back to your boy. Because you got a covenant. Why? Because my flesh is decreasing every day. And I am allowing him to increase within me. And his covenant, he will not break with me. That's his word. You see, everybody cannot work this word. Because this word is not for everybody. This word is only for the believers. And the ones who are saved. So there is nothing in this word God will withhold from me. Because why? I'm decreasing every day. And then I am allowing him to work in me. And even to work things out of me. All right. Too much flesh on display. And just because ain't nobody pulled your coattail don't mean they don't know. Yeah. Some of us ain't saying nothing. We just praying about it. Because God say they not ready to hear what you're saying. Yeah. And by the way, it's not me, it's the one who sent me. Jonah. Just like Jesus. Yeah. They sent him. Jonah. His father sent him. Jonah. But he sent him out yeah. with power. Yeah. He sent him out Jonah. to heal the sick. Yeah. You see, that's what I want to do. But it's going to cause for this flesh to die. People of God, I'm striving every day. I'm striving every day. I want to be like Jesus. I know there are some things I'm going to have to go through. But then for the love of my father, I am willing to do it. But we got to be careful what we're saying because you say you want to be like Jesus. But when the trouble hits you, you tuck in your tail. That's the flesh. Because if you want to be like Jesus, you're going to know what his father told him through the word of God. I will be with you always, even until the end. That means anything I go through, my father is right there with me, going through it with me. He got it. I just got to make up my mind. I'm going to go through it with a praise. I'm not going to wait. Until I come out of it, yeah. I'm going to praise him while I'm in it. Right. Come on here, somebody. That's why the devil wants you to stay in the flesh. Right. Because there's so many things you can learn in the spirit. Yes. I don't come to the place where I turn off my phone uh -huh. at a certain time of day. Yeah. So I could just be with me and God. Right. People may think you mad, you are upset, but I just have a love for God that have intensified. I want more of him yes. and less of me. I want my light to shine every day yeah. throughout the day. Uh -huh. I want to do what my master has told me. Go out there yes. and compel him to come in here. The great commission. Yeah. We are all charged with the great commission. But we got to get the flesh out the way. The flesh is hindering your blessings. Come on. The flesh is hindering your walk with God. The flesh is nothing good. Come on here. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. The Holy Ghost through. John 3 and 30. I must decrease. I must get myself out the way. So Jesus can have his way in me. That's what John did. John had for the teller. This ain't taking nothing away from me. I have set the platform for someone greater to come after me, which is Jesus. And he said it well. 
Even though John was older than Jesus, he still said it well. He was humble enough to step back and let Jesus come through. Come on, let's give God a hand. Too much flesh in the way. Too much flesh. But God say on today, you can return back to your first love. Yes. See, yes. that's what I love about God. I he corrects us with the word, yes. but he comes right back and he heals us with the same word. Hallelujah. Many times we go through stuff, it's only to strengthen our faith yeah. in God. Y'all, I may sound crazy, but I thank God for the trials I went through. Because I would never know how God can solve them and how God could bring me out of them. Mainly, it had strengthened my faith in God. But if I was in the flesh, the devil would have been talking to my mind. Have me taking pills and everything else. If I was in the flesh, going back to my liquor and everything else, if I was in the flesh, but I thank God that I was decreasing. And let me tell you something. God will show you stuff before it happens. He will prepare you. I wasn't praying and fasting this whole year for nothing. When the trouble hit. But he prepared me. But you know what man of God? It didn't touch me. I still praise him. It, I still praise him. Because why? He prepared me. I wasn't in the flesh. While God was preparing me. For something that was going to happen in the natural. Come on here somebody. Come on here somebody. God is so good. That's why I have to correct people. And then I have to uh, really see God first sometimes. Because some people, they get crazy on you. But when you know better, come on here people, God, you would do better. You would do better. God is a good God. God is a forgiving God. But God has standards. He has kingdom standards and principles. And we must follow them. Yes, we must follow them. Come on, let's give God a hand clap and pray. Right. I must decrease in order for him to.